Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review, but you might be thinking, where were you Helen? You've disappeared off the face of the earth. Well, um, I did. I, literally, I did. I think. I think I did. The reason is, I haven't been... My mind has not been on reading of late, and simply because Melbourne is in stage 4 lockdown, and uh, yeah, I've just been thinking about other stuff. So I've been kind of doing some learning, doing some knitting, um, doing a bit of um, French. Anyway, I've been doing other stuff and my mind has not been able to get sucked into a story. However, this one is different. I did end up finishing Cathay Sherazade, an Australian text by Arnold Zabel. Now, Arnold is an Australian author. Is a son of Jewish immigrants and the story here is about the iconic Cafe Sherazade that was in Ackland Street from 1958 through to 2008. Now if you've ever visited Melbourne and gone down to St Kilda which is a suburb near the sea you know there's Luna Park there's cafes there's lots of wonderful cake stores you probably would have come across Cafe Sherazade especially if it was pre-2008 Reading the stories here made me realise, oh my God, we did visit Cafe Sherazade as kids growing up. My, I remember my parents taking us there to have a meal sometimes, but what I didn't understand was the true nature of this cafe. This cafe was established and founded by two Jewish immigrants, um, Avram and Masha Zelenikal. Again, I hope I said that correctly. And they escaped some horrible situations during World War II, the Holocaust, uh, depression, violence, you name it, the Nazi occupation of their, of their home in Poland. So they, they came out here to Australia, established this cafe, and it was where the Jewish immigrants and post-war, a lot of the Holocaust survivors would gather and share their stories. The, um, so I didn't realise that as a kid growing up, I mean you weren't to know, it had some really interesting decor inside, but I guess what was important were the people that were visiting and the, the aspect that the cafe gave a place of solace, uh, gave a place of community, friendship, camaraderie and the fact of giving these stories to life. Now in comes Arnold and what he does is he captures the stories of three uh, Jewish immigrants and one of them is a story of uh, Avram himself and we learn more about his parents involvement in the Bund which was the Jewish socialist movement at a time which was huge and um, the invasion of Poland by the Nazis and a subsequent Red Army coming through after after the war we we read about his story we read about how he tries to at all times escape oppression we read about how the Nazis had basically wiped his entire family um, out and how he makes way and falls in love with uh, Masha and the story there, which is which is wonderful. The book itself is quite, uh, quite a depressing but a beautiful read, if I can... It's, it's a story about stories. It's a, more about the story of storytelling and I'm so glad Arnold was able to capture the stories of these Jewish immigrants um, who many of them now have long since passed in a book and capture the story of two people who wanted to make a place in Melbourne to try and bring um, those stories still and keep them in in the community. Some people might say, why did you read such a depressing book, especially in the time of COVID? And in some ways, I think I've been doing this simply because I've needed to be able to kind of make sense of what the world is going through right now. And what I've realised is, you know, and I've been reading books like um, Ernest Hemingway, uh, Farewell to Arms. Uh, I've been reading some books about World War II as well. The thing is, you've got to read books like that to realise kind of like the extent of what humans can do to other humans, to make you realise that what we're going through with the pandemic here today, nowadays, it's pretty minor. Um, sure, it's pretty harrowing, but hearing and seeing some of the stories that these people had to go through, these survivors had to go through, and the massive emotional impact um, on their families afterwards is huge. Uh, it just kind of makes you realise how actually quite lucky we are in the grand scheme of things. 
So Cafe Sherazade, I had to look into the story of, and I'm hoping I'm saying this correctly, it's because it, it was based on Avram and Masha meeting after the war in Paris in a, in a, in a iconic cafe in Paris called Cafe Sherazade at the time. And I looked into Sherazade and what I wasn't aware of um, was the fact that, and it is also actually mentioned in the book, it comes from a story um, from 1001 Arabian Nights. And a story about a, a, a sultan, uh, a king, who finds out that his wife cheated on him and uh, what he does, he then takes on a virgin, marries a virgin every night and then beheads, beheads her the next day. And so this is done obviously for a long period of time and Sherazade was a queen who selected to go with this, this king but throughout the night she would say a story to him and at dawn she would just kind of leave it at that point where where he wanted to know what happened next and she would say sorry I would have to tell you the story tomorrow and so for a thousand and one nights she continued his wonderful story and thus over that period of time the king fell in love with her and um, the beheading uh, obviously and this awful thing stopped so that was where Sherazad came about and it's not about the story of the queen it's actually a story about stories it's beautifully written a highly recommended book if you want to get yourself sucked into the stories and the emotion of uh, what people had gone through, Jewish immigrants that had gone through world, during World War II, I would highly, highly recommend this book. Beautiful writing, very emotional, depressing at times, but also extremely uplifting. So there you go, Cafe Sherazade by Arnold Sable.